One of the reasons why US President Joe Biden does not provide full military aid to Ukraine is that he is afraid of the collapse of Russia, writes Ukrainian publication Zekalo Tizny with reference to sources. Within the limits of presidential arms transfer powers, Biden could have long ago provided Ukraine with the necessary weapons that would strategically improve the situation on the battlefield, but the White House consistently ignores this possibility, the publication notes. According to sources, Washington is guided by several military, technical and political motives. At the same time, it is noted that the risk of the war expanding to the territory of NATO countries or the nuclear threat are not the main ones. The following motives are indicated. Politicians and the US military fear that the excessive transfer of equipment and ammunition to Ukraine may deplete the Pentagon's reserves and the US may be unprepared for conflicts in other parts of the world, for example in the Indo-Pacific region or the Middle East. The political tradition of the USA assumes that decisions that could tie the hands of the future head of state are not made before the presidential elections. Washington still adheres to the 2022 strategy, according to which the war should continue only on the territory of Ukraine. The Biden administration is afraid of the possible collapse of Russia as a result of the victory of Ukraine. In particular, in Washington, they do not want to allow China to return the primitive territories annexed by the Russian Federation in the 20th century. The publication added that Biden adheres to a view of Russia formed back in the 1970s when the USSR was a strong adversary that the US tried not to irritate. Although the US is providing weapons to Kiev, military analysts point out that it is deliberately not giving the Ukrainian army a specific type of weapon. In addition, the ban on using army specific types of weapons. In addition, the ban on using American munitions against military bases on Russian territory is still in force. This is a ban that is illogical and that Kiev has long wanted to be lifted. The statement was made against the background of how Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. Against the background of warming relations between the regime and Russia, the Taliban announced their intention to build air defenses in Afghanistan with the help of Russian equipment. And if in recent months, as it turned out, Moscow is ready to arm the Houthis in Yemen and even Hezbollah in Lebanon with modern missiles, it may not be so ready for the current ruling regime in Kabul, writes Forbes. In early 2023, less than two years after reconquering Afghanistan amid a chaotic US withdrawal, the Taliban allocated the largest share of Afghanistan's defense budget, declaring their intention to build air defenses. Anti-aircraft missiles are a need of the country. There is no doubt that Afghanistan is trying and doing everything possible to get them, said Taliban commander Kari Fasihuddin Fitrata and the army chief of staff. On August the 29th, General Syed Abdul Basir Saberi, chief of logistics at the Taliban-controlled Afghan Ministry of Defense, was much more blunt. I think we need equipment for air defense and airspace control. We have ground equipment. I think we will buy such products from you at the international level when the international legal conditions for this appear," Saberi said. 
It is noted that a few years ago, it was impossible to imagine that the Taliban could make such a request. But Saberi's statement was made during a period of warming relations, an example of which was Moscow's invitation to the St. Petersburg Forum in May. Saberi's comments suggest that the group hopes that warming relations could lead to the purchase of weapons. The statement also came after Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. The transfer of armor to the Taliban or short and medium-range systems such as the Buck and Thor would undoubtedly alarm the United States. After withdrawing troops in August 2021, the US killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in an over-the-horizon drone strike in central Kabul where the Taliban were hosting him. The advanced air defense system in Afghanistan may make it difficult to carry out similar operations using drones. In March, the Taliban said that American drones were patrolling and violating the country's airspace. There is also a serious risk that any air defenses Russia supplies to the group could endanger civilian aviation. Afghanistan's airspace has become one of the main routes between Europe and Asia, and many airlines that previously avoided it for years have increased the number of flights over the country amid heightened tensions in the Middle East between Israel and Iran.